So welcome to Bunny's Designs. This is a live stream with live people having an utter in chat on YouTube, on Ustream, sorry, which is recorded for Ustream.tv and also for YouTube for people to watch at their leisure. Um, I'm working in the Joanna Basford Magical Jungle because it's been a bit neglected. I keep getting all these new colour books. Um, and then I found out that you know it's really gorgeous paper and I should go back into this. So I'm going to be working on the butterfly page with my dried Dr. Martin's PH Hydrus. I, I reactivated them yesterday, but they're almost dry again. So I just have visions of a beautiful green teal butterfly. So I'm going to zoom in and then we can have a look and see what's happening. So hopefully everything's okay. If anybody's got any questions. So I'm just going to shut that for a second so I don't make everybody giddy. And that doesn't look too bad, so can we read these? So these are my paintbrushes but they're from a model railway show so they're not professional ones um, it's just the sizes that I like and I happen to forget mine so these are a 1, a 3 and a 310 and if I just dampen that one you'll see it's quite fine is that because sometimes you want to get into some tiny spaces so you will need a tiny brush so if I'm going in a bigger space and I want a watercolour effect, I use the bigger rigger. That's how I normally work. So I've got my hydras next to me. Now normally what you have is if you're left-handed, you want your paintbrushes, your water, your palette on your left side. And if you're right-handed, you want it on your right side. Um, but unfortunately, my shoulder and elbow do not like to move at the moment so I'm I have my colors next to my page um, and they are on a piece of photocopy paper so when I'm having a look at new colors I just have a bit of a test just to make sure it's the right one because you'd hate to put it on because this hydras is very difficult to maneuver because it's very very vibrant so I've got um, a pot of water and a, and a baby wipe so I'm dipping into the into the pot of water and then twisting to a point so I have a damp brush. It's not saturated with water, it's just damp. And I find that's the perfect combination to get a really nice watercolour effect using these really nice hydras. But you do need to use them from dry. If you want to use them from wet, it's a completely different um, it's a flat color so if you want to use them dry I suggest use them wet and do a, a practice page and then let them dry and then when you do them dry you'll get this watercolor effect but it's very diff different using them wet than it is using them dry oh hi Melody welcome to Bunny's Designs we're working in Joanna's um, magical Jungle because I've neglected this book I've only done a couple of pages so I thought um, I need to, a bit of a rust going so I could keep bringing out the books and then taking one from behind <laughs> I haven't got Secret Garden I really would love Secret Garden but I, again I can't justify buying another colour book until I, I, I kind of get going with this so um, I'm going to do the butterfly first, I think. So put the butterfly in there and I'll zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. So I might be a little bit sick for a moment. I'm pretty sure that's in focus. So I want 
I think I want from pale to dark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this this way so my wrist is comfortable. You've got to be comfortable. If you're turning backwards on yourself like this, you're not going to stay in the lines and you're going to make mistakes and you're going to be uncomfortable. So you need to be comfy. Um, so I'm going for this, I think I'm going for the middle, the middle brush. Do I go for the middle one? I think so. So I've got an inkwell with water and a little pot. Um, and I'm going to be using um, Thalo Blue and Thalo Green. I really like these colours. Um, so I think I'm going to have the Thalo Green in the middle. So this damp brush is a rigger and so what it's going to do is take that colour to nothing. So you have a beautiful watercolour effect and you've hardly any water and it's dried now. So that's what I love about this way of doing things. Again you've got to stop, dampen the rigger and then twist it off on a baby wipe and then touch your colour again. So I'm going to do the other wing that way. Um, so I'm going to do exactly what I did. You've got to do it instantly because it dries. So again, twist the brush, touch a little bit of green, and away we go. Again, you've got to be comfortable. But if you mess about too much, your brush will dry. So you've got to kind of... A practice page would be best, but you can get that beautiful effect from dark to light, and it's a blended effect. Yes, Claudia, I'll show you again, darling. Yep. So what I'm doing is I'm dunking in here because it's a big flat space, so you're not damaging your brush. Just damping in there, taking a little bit off here, then I'm using a damp baby wipe to twist the brush. So most of that water's on there now. It's just a damp brush. And then I'm just touching a little bit, just that much. That's it, the tiniest amount. And then touching this bit here. And the brush is just damp. And it's going to take that to there. So I've dusted, dunked and twisted. This is the dried pigment on here. And there's a bit of green there, just a couple of touches, that's all you need. This is why you need to do a practice page so you get it exactly the same. Because mine was a bit, I, I touched too many times then. So this rigger now is releasing a tiniest amount of water. So I'm going to go down here next. So dunk in the water, twist on the baby wipe. Here's the green. Two little touches and then away we go. This brush is a bit big for this space, but here we go. But if you photocopy a page first, by the time you've finished colouring in that photocopy page, you will know how much pigment to pick up, how damp brush to be, and you will have these lovely watercolour effects. I think so. I mean, I I practiced on quite a few um, the hydrus ones. There's a the stumper. That was one of my. I think that's my th first attempt. So I touched the red and then kind of manipulated it. And then I was playing with colours, finding out how they worked, finding out how light to dark they were. So by the time you've done a page, you can get 
an idea of that's obviously the first, second, third. So if you want it variegated, you do one every other leaf and then come back and do one every other, then go back and do one every other until you have that effect unless you want it to grade, grad, um, gradation of colour. You do it differently. Start on the outside and work in. Start at the bottom and work up. But once you've done a photocopy paper, you know how much to do. So I can, these are a little bit too vibrant for a Bible page, but control of the damp brush is the most important and how much colour you get on. So I just want a touch because all I want to do now is to manipulate this together, this bit here. So I'm going to turn the book. Now you should really do this. I don't when I'm filming because it's a pain for everybody to watch, but this is how you should really do it. You want to be able to get that curve. So you need to turn the page. And again, the photocopy is brilliant for that because you've already, you know, you can turn a piece of paper. So again, a damp brush, touch this colour, literally a nanosecond, <laughs> and then in you go. Again, that's that little bit darker because I touched a space that had slightly more colour on it. And then we just keep moving that colour around. But once you've done a photocopy paper size, you will have got control of the brush, control of the amount of water and control of the amount of paint. So it would be a, it'll be a lot easier to do. So I need lesser amount to see if I can get round here now. I have to build that colour up. I may change my brush actually because I think that one's just a bit big. So I've learnt to reconstitute things and go back in and then manipulate round. No, it's the right size brush but this brush is the ends kind of giving up on me a bit. If you start to play too much you end up with a damaged page. So I can actually just about manage to pick up a small amount. But it doesn't have to be perfect, but it just gives that really nice effect. So if I turn that round the right way, it's got quite a nice effect all the way around it. I'm going to change brushes though because that one's getting on my nerves a bit. I want to be a bit a bit finer, but I do need control. Whoopsie. So I'm going for number three, a number two, and a number one. Sometimes when you rub with these paint brushes, they don't last long, but I've had them a couple of years. So I'm going to change to, these are slightly shorter riggers, even though they're called riggers. So this is the De La Rowney rigger graduate. I've got a three, a two, and a one. And then I have my little liner from De La Rowney, which is 10 zero. And that one gives me some really nice control. So those should be long enough to be able to manipulate because these are smaller spaces. So I'm going to use the number one rigger. Sometimes you have to change and I use different brushes, brushes with different pages depending on what I'm colouring in. If that made any, sen any sense. Again, I'm going to turn this very carefully 
so that I can manipulate this round. If I was just colouring in, I wouldn't bother doing that, but I want that gradient, that gradation of colour, that watercolour effect. Um, so I need this to be kind of dark here. And again, I'm not really at the right angle, so that's not the best. And then I want to manipulate this colour around. And in theory, by the time you get to here, it's the same as going that way. So you can judge. If you did a, a, a practice photocopy of this, by the time you've got round here, you know how much you need for each length in order to judge that lovely colour. So you can blend that across. Um, so again, a damp brush. And I'm not going into deep colour here. I'm going into the palette that's already had the colour taken from it. So again these hydras are very well pigmented. And manipulate that round. So we have a really pale green colour. So then I'm going to turn, I'm going to leave that this way around because I can do it this way around. So damp brush, twisted, and I'm working in this section here, not in the dark. I'm working in this section that's already had a little bit taken off it, so that brush was a bit too damp. So I just want to touch a little bit, and again, it's the tiniest amount. it's the tiniest amount because I want to work in pale colours. If you want your vivid colours use the liquid watercolour exactly as it is and you will get the v bright vivid colours. Um, so again I think this is really soft and muted. Oopsie, sorry about that. When you compare it to this one, which I can't find. So these are the exact same colours. But I'm using wet so you don't have the pale colour. You have some control towards the end but most of it is really rich, vivid, bright colours. So there's two ways of working. This is with wet liquid dunked into the liquid. There is a video on this on these as well. So that's how to use them wet. So they're very vibrant, very striking. And this is working when they've dried, so it's like a watercolour effect, but you're still having some beautiful colours. So there's different ways to use them. Um, and again, it's practice. So again, just dunking into that. I should move my books now. Um, I think this have made that a little bit too dark now. So it doesn't match. So I've got to take that away to blend it, otherwise it won't blend nicely. But that worked okay. Sometimes you just don't hit the colour exactly right. So you can take that round and take that up. You've almost got that into that lovely colour. And again, it's a nice, quiet way to work, is this. You're just manipulating colour around. And 
and there comes a point where it will it will mix you get used to knowing the colours now sometimes I miss it and sometimes I hit it just right um, but it's just a really nice way to work so I've been around there, been around there so I think um, I think I'm going to go down here now so again I don't want a lot I certainly don't want to touch um, a blob of colour that's dried and it's a big deep puddle I want just a little bit of a hint of a colour um, so I've got this teal here um, thalo blue rather sorry thalo blue so I'm going to touch the thalo blue and then I'm going to put most of it here and then manipulate that up so again touch in here and manipulate that up and that's a bit strong because it's not giving me a watercolour effect really it's just a medium thin a medium blend although it's different so I can live with that but I really wanted to go from dark to light oops I picked the wrong place there never mind I can do that in a second right so I need to do the other side exactly the same or I don't need to but I'd like to so oops again I didn't touch the same place so I'm just putting that into there and then manipulating that to a watercolour so you can get again I like dark colors because you can manipulate them so if you're in a kind of a bright if it's a bright page then you've got really bright colors and if it's a um, a pale a pale page you can do pale colors so if you carry it on you get paler ones now I'm playing about with this so I can actually go back into here because it's got to be fun if it's too strenuous you don't want to do it I really like these soft colours. Oh, thank you, Kenny. Thank you. So this one, I touched a tiniest amount to have a very pale colour. Um, so there's lots of different ways you can do things. I actually prefer it this other way but I might have to do that the same now and it gets softer and I like the fact there's no heat pads, no heat guns, there's no hair dryers it's dried and that's almost dry and let me think we're going to do. I had thought of some really bright colours, but these are kind of lending themselves to some really soft, soft colours. And sometimes you start a page and you think, I'm going to go really bright, and something happens and, and you don't, and it's and it's fine. You just follow what you're doing. So I actually quite like this now. It's not what I envisage for this, but I'm enjoying it, so I'm just going to go with it. And there's some really nice watercolour effects on here. Um, 
so you can sometimes steal a bit because it is a professional watercolour so you can steal a bit of that bright colour and have a bit of variation Okay, so she's trying to get, yeah, well, I use the same technique for the Cotman's, uh, Winsor Newton Cotman colours, professional watercolours. Um, I use the same method for um, Karen Dashnia colour twos. Nearly, and Derwent pencils, you know, you can scratch a bit of colour on a piece of paper and then use the rigger in exactly the same way to pick up the colour. It's all to do with picking up a tiny bit of colour at the end and then manipulating it like a watercolour like here. So all the time you're moving this dampness is coming out and it's diluting that colour. So you get the watercolour effect without any water. Um, and it, it did take me two years to get this effect. It took me a long time. Um, it didn't just happen overnight. But yes, that's definitely... Uh, it, it, it's and again, But again, once you've done a photocopy paper, um, on photo paper, if you copy a, a particular page, especially your favourite page, um, if you... Once you've done a complete page in your favourite medium, you will have ironed out a lot of problems. You will have worked out how to do highlights. You would have worked out that, you know, I've stopped there, but I need this colour, but that's the strongest. So maybe I'll just take a touch from there instead of two touches. And you desire, you, you find out how to how to manage the colours. And and this is your tool. This is the basic tool. Getting a tiny bit of colour on the end and manipulating it to be a watercolour. I'm sure it'll be fine and it's very easy and very it's a very quiet easy way to work. Um, you have your colours um, and bear in, from, from this colour there'll be 20 colours you can get. If you were slightly darker you'd get another colour. So you can get hundreds of colours out of this palette here by using um, different tones and different amounts of water. So that's why the Hydras are really good and the uh, Derwent Ink Tens are fantastic as well for that because they give that th th that um, kind of... you can manipulate the colour but it is all to do with a rigger, and riggers are sometimes strange things. You can have long, thin ones that kind of wobble all over the place. But you determine normally the size of the rigger for the size of space. That's how I normally judge it. But again, once you've done a complete photocopy page of your favourite image, you will have ironed out an awful lot of problems. And that's all you're doing. And it's a practice. I did a practice on that Colin Thompson page with the books. It took two solid days because I didn't have anything else to do. So 16 hours. I was sitting behind a model show, models exhibition and I just sat and did that. But by the time I finished I worked out the colours I didn't like, the colours I liked. I worked out what colours to put back together next to each other, what colours not to put next to each other. I found that, that on pages there were things that I hadn't seen, so I didn't make that mistake again. So there was lots of things to think about uh, with this, with with uh, photocopying your favourite page. But then that book, it didn't matter what I see in that book, I can colour that. Um, slightly different for different books, different pages, but the principle is the same. And although everybody might think, oh, it's a bit of a waste of a day or two days, the, most of the pages in my colour book turned out all right. But if I hadn't have done that practice page, there would have been quite a few that I would have been a bit upset with. So it depends on where you want to take your colour book. I'll just finish this off. I hope I'm in frame. 
Sorry, I'm not in frame, am I? No. Sometimes if you stop, your brush is just barely damp that if you stop for any reason, it will be dry. It doesn't stay damp for long. So these liquid hydras, um, they're about eight pounds, six to eight pounds a bottle, but you get a US half ounce, um, which is for, you know, there's a few drops in here, it lasts a long time. And again, tight Yorkshire lass, a kind of like having, um, getting my money's worth. So I had envisaged on doing this lots of different colours, but I'm, I'm quite enjoying myself with these blues and greens. So I'm going to stick with these, I think. And because you're working just with a damp rigger, your pages won't buckle. Now, if it doesn't, doesn't bother you, your pages buckle, that's fine. Just go for it. But I kind of like the fact my pages take flat. I'm going to go make myself a drink in a second when I finish this butterfly because I can feel my throat starting to tickle. So this is quite a small space and yet this brush can cope with that. So sometimes it's another idea is you get used to your brush, you get used to the brush size. You know, if I had a larger space I could not do this at all, it would not work. So you, again, you get used to the tools you're using. And I mean, nobody can pick up a tool and use it perfectly the first time, so, you know, or pick a page in the book you don't particularly like, that's another way to do it. Um, pick a page that you will never use in a million years and use that as your practice. Now, I'm really at the wrong angle for this, but... I'm so enjoying just playing with these colours. Oh, thank you, Kenny. Yeah, again, I really did not envisage doing this. I wanted extremely vivid dark colours here going to practically nothing on the outside but that hasn't worked so sometimes you do have to change how you're working but it's it doesn't bother me so much I'm not upset that I haven't got the image that I wanted um, I'm just going to colour this in these nice colours um, and you've got to be a bit quick if you don't want lines on them So you need to go back into there. And this is why sometimes a bigger brush is, is sometimes advisable. But then... You can get some quite nice colours. Now that is going to be too dark, I can tell too much colour on there. So just building colour up sometimes is quite nice as well. Now that's going to buckle a little bit, but not very much, because I've, I've gone over it so many times. 
don't normally go over things too many times, but I'll match that colour up a bit. Sometimes it's quite nice to have kind of different watercolour effects. But it's not really what I envisaged at all for this page. I really wanted something different, but hey ho, it's a colour book. Probably could do with a bit bigger brush, but and then we want some some of that blue. I'm just going to turn that here. slightly wrong angle so you, you could do better if you turn your page and be at a better angle than I am. Um, but again I like this because it's fairly quick and yet it's not rushing, it's not a rush job, it's just going at your own pace, um, picking shapes off and choosing colours and just enjoying the process because that's what it's all about. It's not a race. It's not who can be better than anybody else. It's just, I'm enjoying this. This is the process that is calming to your soul. And this is why you do it. You're not doing it because you want to be the best on YouTube. Or you want the best number of hits on Facebook. You're doing it because it's what you enjoy doing. And it's peaceful. And it doesn't matter if you... Uh, in a wheelchair or you can run a mile everybody can do this and it's just very very enjoyable and that's why I like doing it it's just quite therapeutic and that's what we do it for therapy Sorry if my hand's in the way. So I'm a bit, uh, I'm not cross, but um, it's not how I wanted to do this. But again, it's another colour page done. It'll be um, I'm not sure I could fill the whole space, a big space with these, because you would then have buckling if you were doing this all the way across, unless you did it in small sections. So again, that's something that you can't do with this. But um, It's just nice to play with colour. Now that's not to say, even though you're not in a race, that you're going to do a botched job. Because you'll be cross with yourself. Especially if you know that normally you can do better. So again, that's why a photocopy of the favourite page is quite nice. Because it'll let you 
iron out all the problems. And you also learn things you like and things you don't like. And you don't want to learn that halfway through a page. Especially if it's a page that's going to take you weeks. So I don't particularly li like that. It's not normally my style, but if I pull zoom out a bit, it'll look okay. So I quite like the colours, um, and it's watercolory-ish, but it's not how I envisage this dark vi butterfly here with the palest, um, the palest things there. But hey how I'm using a different brush. I'm also using a different colour on there as well, but never mind. But it's okay. Yes, Karen. Karen says the most important thing is to take it from this is, is to enjoy it. Yeah. As I say, it's not a race. There are people that are going to be a lot better than you and there are people that are going to be a lot that go over the lines. But people that go over the lines can make things just as beautiful as people that stay in the lines. There are going to be people who are colours are better than others. There are going to be people who, who finish pages f faster or some people who who do things differently. Everybody's different. Everybody's going to... But the idea is you sit with your book and your paints and you enjoy what you're doing. You're not doing this. It's not work. If it becomes a chore, it's not It's not enjoyable, then you need to stop doing it. It's got to be enjoyable. So I'm going to change my brushes because I'm not happy with those brushes. Um, now whether it's the paper or whether it's just me, I don't know, but I will get there eventually. But a photocopy of this would have ironed all that out. See that's got a little bit more to it. So these are my riggers from Aquafine by De La Rowney. Uh, a six, a four and a two. So I'm going to go with that one because I want to get a nice bluebell effect. Um, so again I'm going to turn the page over and I'll zoom in and then you can see what I'm doing. So even though it hasn't turned out how I wanted it, I'm still okay with it. I'm still okay with it. So I'm going to do this bluebell so you can either do lighter to darker or darker to lighter. So I think I'm going to go darker to lighter. So I actually want to be this way up, so sorry about that. So I need to take my my rigger, dunk it, twist it to a point, and I think I'm going to do a French ultramarine. And then you've got to kind of manoeuvre that quick before it dries up. Now maybe I had too much on there. Maybe I should have just done this. So we'll just practice. Any there, did I? Whoopsie. Like the blue, though. I think it's French ultramarine the blue. So when you start playing with it that you can damage your paper really. Yes, 
So you've got to decide how you want it. I think this paper is slightly different. Um, but I'm enjoying the colour, I'm enjoying the process, it's just not how I envisaged it. But that's fine, it's fine. touch more onto that whoopsie and again eventually you find the right spot to put the paintbrush so you can have darker ones and you can have paler ones So I'm going for the finer brush because I'm going to use um, I've made an olive here, I've made an olive colour so I kind of think I want these to be an olivey colour so I wonder if I've got enough to get all the way around I should have um, so let's just touch that and see No, nope, don't like that colour. Let me have a look at this one. Yes, I like that one. So I've made this one because we didn't have a lot of green, so just a touch of green on there. And then manoeuvre that round. If you think the brush is too wet, you can nip it. If you get the brush here, now the colour's there. If you nip it here once, turn it and nip it again, that will take all that if it's too damp. But it's almost dry, that. Yes, Claudia, they, they, they can... Yeah, Claudia says that she... Some never come out as they envisaged them. Some are better than others. But again, that's experimental. So if you experimented with a photocopy first, you would have found things that you like, things that you didn't like, things that you expected, things that you didn't expect. And you could then choose, well, actually, I'm glad I did that because I would never have thought about that. But I like it better. So there's always a good excuse for doing photocopies of pages and because this rigger is a little bit bigger I can take this green to practically nothing And I quite like that effect. And because it's a rigger, it's going to keep going, because it's it's because of its nature. It's going to keep giving all that dampness out, and diluting that colour. So we've gone from there up to there. So we've got two, four, six. We've got eight different shades of green, from one touch. Now the idea is you try and get the different touches every time, but it doesn't always work. Again, it's a little bit damp is this, but this paper can take that. I only got two leaves out of that one, so... I obviously touched the colour a different way. But again, I like that effect. It's a different way of doing something. 
it's not what I envisage doing, but it's very, very therapeutic. It's easy. It's quick. It's just different. It's just a different way of working. But again, I really like it. It's just quite nice to dunk into a drop of water and then just dunk into a little tiny bit of paint. It's just an easy way to work. So I may not have got my variegated whatever I wanted, but that's fine. Again, you can dot about a bit if you don't want them all to look identical. And then when you go back over here, they're going to be paler. Now, because of Joanna's books are always cream or ivory, I don't actually like doing backgrounds because I think the images just sit really nicely on top. Oh, well, you can do, Kate, yes. Um, the Art Master ones are really good. Um, I think I do have some in here. There's the Art Master Series Pearl, Series 55. They're the ones I have on that section. I get them in threes normally. I get them in threes. So I have a two zero, a two and a zero. And those are the Art Master Pearl Series 55. But I don't think they call themselves riggers. But as long as you have a thicker one, a medium one and a fine one, that's all you really need. But it has to be a long rigger. It can't be an ordinary paintbrush. I've got hundreds of those. The, 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 the water just gushes out as soon as you touch a page and you will wet the page. So that's not really what we want. So as long as it's it looks like a bit like a rigger, that's fine. Um, so I'm just going to carry on. I forgot what paintbrush I was using now. I think I was using a two, wasn't I? Yep. Um, and literally all I'm doing is you see the little holes there. I'm just damp brush touching in. That's it. And look at all the colour that's coming out. It's really art extremely vibrant and you don't need very much so again just a touch in and again it's just a really nice way to work um, there's no big paintbrush all the paint that you're using goes on the page so I love that Tight Yorkshire Lass. There's no... I keep going until there's hardly anything on the paintbrush. I get all those lovely pale greens out. And I'm still dunking in the same water and it's clear. It's the same water. And the same baby wipe. So again, all that colour is not going down the drain like it could be. If you're doing a big space though you've got to remember to keep going because it, it will dry because it's barely damp but sometimes you can get some nice watercolour effects that way. You can't overwork a page because you make a hole that's the only thing you can't do. If you make a big boo-boo you just have to leave it to dry maybe a couple of hours and then go back over it because if you normally, like I've done, go back over, you can tell the page is just starting to buckle. See, that's a nice watercolour effect, that one. I 
Yes, they they are short. Some are shorter. Um, the, there's another little one in here. And the riggers, I mean, the Dale, the graduate Dale O'Rowney ones are shorter as well. But the Art Master Pearl 55 is longer, but it's not called a rigger. But I would say that that's a rigger. But sometimes, um, as long as it's long and thin, sometimes if they're too long, they wobble all over the place and they're a pest. So again, buy one, have a play. It it doesn't really matter as long as it's not like a normal brush. I can't find mine at the moment. The normal watercolour brushes is once you touch the little fat bristles, the water and the colour gushes. We don't want that to happen. We want to hold everything as long as possible. And the idea of these is they release slow and long. And that's why they could do these long... Um, riggers for the that's why they're called riggers because of the rigs um all the rigging that was on the tall ships they wanted a brush that would go from continuously in a single line uh, a little bit like sign writers theirs are very long because they want they don't want to be able to stop dipping again and going again because they're going to have a gap so they need that continuous flow and that's why they work brilliantly in watercolor books but it did take me a couple of years to get my little colour book and my, my riggers to, to match. It took a long time. I used to use a, a, a water brush, but they're a bit too wet for colour books. Um, so it, it, as I say, it did take a long time, but I really like these colours. So although I didn't like this at first, or I'll rephrase that, it's not what I wanted to do. Um, if we look at it, it doesn't look too bad. You know, they are nice, soft, muted colours. And you would never think that they're the same colours as in here. It's just, instead of using... And I think I used a rigger. I'm pretty sure I used a rigger. But these are the same colours. Those two greens there, the green and the blue, are the same green and blue that I'm using. Sorry, I tell a lie. That one isn't. But this one are the same greens. Those are the same greens. And blues. Thalo green and thalo blue. And that's thalo green and thalo blue. And it's actually the same pad. It's, it's actually the same palette, I'm trying to say. That's the palette that I used. So it's the same palette. It's just I'm using them really muted down. And again, that's another one. Those colours are the same. So the hydras are really good because you, they're very versatile. You can have rich, gorgeous colours and then you can have really soft, muted colours. And that's what you need. You need to get the maximum effect out of your watercolours or out of your whatever you use. Um, because it's just easier that way, it's cheaper and and it's more enjoyable because it makes you get the full potential out of one particular medium. So that that's not going to look so bad when it's finished. It's going to have um, the bluebells. The bluebells are the French ultramarine. Um, and then the, the and the green is the green that I've made up myself because the, there was only the thalo green in this set. So I would have really start with six colours. I made the oranges and I made the cad yellow because there wasn't a, I haven't got a cad yellow. So I made um, I have a gamboge, but I had the lemon yellow, the very bright cold yellow, and I put a touch of orange in it to make cad yellow. Um, I didn't have a cad red, so I took the bright pink and put a touch of orange into it, and that made a cad red. Um, the blues I had, the purples and the two blues, I think that's cobalt blue and that's like a, uh, a French ultramarine, a purpley blue. Um, and then I had, I think I did have that green, I can't remember. But that's thalo green and thalo blue. And I made, um, I took cobalt blue 
and the yeah, the cold yellow and I made a green and then I put another cup, couple of drops of the Hansa, yellow Hansa in there, the cold yellow and a touch of that green and made the other green but, so that green's come out of there which you would never think but it has so colour mixing your own colours and again I've made the olive in the corner there so you can colour mix your own colours and you only need six bottles and you can make every colour on the planet Suzanne says she loves gamboge. Yes, I do. I thought if there might have been some flowers in here. So this might be a bit boring now, but um, I'm quite enjoying myself with them. It's it's quite nice, um, and you get you get used to it. You get used to doing different colours. Um, it's nice to put a darker one next to a lighter one. And you can darken some up a bit sometimes. So it's taken about an hour. It's taken about an hour, has that? So it's um, maybe just short of a quarter of a page. It's the it's the sixth of a page, I would say. And we've been about an hour. So. This page would take me probably two, a couple of hours, I think, two or three hours. You could do this in an evening if you're watching TV, because I keep stopping and starting, whereas normally, you, you know, once you picked your bluebells off, all the greens are going to be the same. So I've, I didn't actually test any colours because I knew basically roughly what they were. So I'm quite happy with that. I like I love the fact that the page is flat. I like the fact I've got a little bit of a watercolour effect. I've got some gorgeous soft greens. You can't tell the green on the butterfly, but it is actually green. It's a green colour. And so I've got some nice greens in there. But it's a different way of working, as I say, and it's quite nice to work with these a different way. So if I had another, a bigger space, I could kind of, maybe this one, I would, this is in watercolour. I had visions, I would write oranges and things for this one, and the, the uh, Spanish flower, I think it's called, that one. So there's, there's different different pages, different images spark different colours. This is pastel colours, really soft pastel colours. So I wanted pastel colours on there. Um, so different colours bring out different things. Um, so I might just finish off a little bit there so you can see exactly what I'm doing. If I pan out you can actually see how things are done. So I have my green paint there. And don't get your baby wipe next to your pages because it will crease and buckle them. So I'm dunking in there flat, gently, twisting on there. And then just touch of colour there and away we go. And I've still got some colour on here, so I'm going to do the little ones. Because it's nice to get some really soft, pastel, pale colours. So this has almost become a colour wheel of greens. So out of one green you can get so many colours. No, I don't normally go back in it. I don't go back in it. And again, that's what I like about it. Once it's done, it's done. I did with the Harry Potter one, but that was different. That was, I wanted to get that to be kind of photorealism. But no, once once it's done, that's it. Because, and I'll, again, I like that. I don't have to go back into the damn thing again. 
um, you know, once you, I will do obviously the stalks. The stalks will be a different green, I think. Um, and a different brush. I think that's going to be the finer brush. I'll probably use my ten zero liner for that because it's a tiny one, and I just touch that light green, and then manipulate that into there. Now the liner doesn't stay as wet as a rigger, so you can't get as much done. The rigger kind of goes on and on and on and you can get quite a lot done. This has now become so wet, I don't actually need to dunk into that. I can just squish this, twist to a point, and pick colour up. And it's because they're very vibrant. So, again, really should be the angle that's most comfortable for you, and that will allow you to manipulate the colour where you want it. So I hope made that made sense, and thanks for joining me. Hope everybody's okay. Um, again, quite like that. Now it's just got that lighter stem, bright. I would also call that a pea, a pea green. That one. Um, so a pea green is three drops of yellow Hansen and one little tiny bit of. Um, of a dark of a darker green. So you can make your own then. And this paint, when it's dried, if you just touch it with a damp brush, immediately sticks. You don't have to rub about and and scratch round to get any any colour. The second you touch that with a damp brush you get colour. So sometimes the pans you have to kind of scrub about a bit. This one you definitely don't do that. The minute you touch that colour with a damp brush you have colour on the end of your paintbrush. And this colour goes a long way because it's very vibrant. And I love the the backgrounds. So again, I, it's very not very often I do any backgrounds because I really like the cream ivory paper on the Joanna Basford uh, colour pages. So I don't really want to do anything to it. I actually quite like it sitting quite naturally like that. So that's how I work. And again, you can if you have this on a on a cushion tray. Or you could even put that in the centre of that side if you wanted. So now you've just got this or a little jam jar. That's what I put on last time, a little jam jar, because that's a bit heavy for me. So I just had a little jam jar and I was just touching about a bit. And if you're working in the reds, then you put that on the greens. So this go on a cushion tray next to where you're working. So you could do it while you're watching TV, so I quite like that as well. So these are very, very, very soft greens. Oh, that you're welcome, Claudia. I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad you want to. Uh, I'm glad you've enjoyed that. So I'm going to stop this video because it's gone on for an hour, and we're not sure about you, stream bless it. But that's what you need. Uh, a baby wipe, but do not get that near here because it will buckle the gorgeous flat pages. So, um, thank you for watching, and that's the end of part one of our Joanna Basford uh, Magical Jungle with our Dr. Martin's Hydrus working from dry with a rig of pa a paintbrush. Thanks for watching. <laughs>